Welcome to the Self Growth Nerds podcast, where we help you embrace the most courageous version of yourself. My name is Marie, and I'm an adventure seeker who is obsessed with following the joy and creating more freedom. If you're eager for deep conversations, big questions, and meaningful connection, join me on the quest to discovering how we can live a more magical and memorable life. Hello, nerds! Welcome to episode number 10 of the Self Growth Nerds podcast. This one is a very special one. I might cry, I'm not sure, but I can tell you I was getting pretty emotional while I was writing it. Before we get into today's topic, I want to tell you a little bit about the creative process behind this podcast. I've been really enjoying every step of the way. How it works is that every two weeks, I sit down to look at the list of all the subjects I want to help you with and then choose the next two episodes, depending on what's going on in my life and what feels closer to my heart in that moment. I write a summary of each subject and then on a different day, because it uses a different part of my brain, I sit down with my laptop and I write it all down. I put my phone away and I go down to the basement of my heart It's as if I talk to you in my head ahead of time. And as I tell you the stories and guide you through each topic, I type the words down to make sure I don't forget anything when the time comes to record it. Once it's written, I let some time pass, at least 24 hours, before sitting with the two episodes and recording them. Once they're recorded, I send them over to my friend and editor Etienne. Sometimes we have a back and forth as he does the editing. Other times he just sends me the final file and I sit and listen to myself to make sure I make sense. Then the final step is to upload the episode onto Simplecast, choose the title, write the description, and that's it. Simplecast takes care of publishing it everywhere. I do this process every two weeks and I've been finding a great sense of purpose in creating this content for you. It brings me so much joy whenever I hear from you that the podcast is having an impact and that you look forward to the episode every week. So don't hesitate to drop into my DMs or what do we say? To slide into my DMs or email me to share your insights. It's a fuel that keeps me going. Right, today's episode is divided in 10 sections, but I'm actually just going to release five of them this week so that the episode is not too long. We're going to look at the 10 lessons I have learned from the moment I decided to through hike all the way to returning home. Basically, the content of the book I wrote last year channeled into these two episodes. The idea of quote-unquote life lessons was on everyone's mind when I came back from the trail. I wasn't fresh off the plane that friends and family and complete strangers would ask me about what my biggest life lessons were. Looking at me wide-eyed as if I would deliver a precious secret that would fix all of their problems. My answers to this question were always so boring and disappointing to me and to the others. I felt angry with myself for not being able to convey the experience I'd just been through. I looked up to the sky and I apologized to the trail, to the grandiosity of the experience, to the friends I had made for not finding the words to explain how much they had impacted me. I was not there yet. I needed time to process. Lots of time. Hours and hours of thinking and sitting in front of my laptop to write and write and write and cry and cry and cry. And I found some words. They're not perfect, but they're the best I can do right now. So let's dig in and start with number one. Number one is deciding to hike. That Sunday night on November 11th, 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 2018, I was lying in my bed looking at the ceiling while my partner Ollie was snoring beside me. In that small moment, I decided to believe in myself. Three days later, it was time to book my permit to hike the PCT. My mom used to do an impression of Thomas the the little train that could when I was a kid. 
she'd go, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And I would smile or later as a teenager, I would roll my eyes. But that's kind of what happened in that moment. I told myself, I think I can maybe achieve the impossible. I chose possibility over limitations. And that's something we need to do every time we face something new. Have you ever heard of Joseph Campbell's analysis of the hero's journey? According to Mr. Campbell, every story starts in the realm of the ordinary. You're just living your life. There's nothing special. Then suddenly you hear the call to adventure. That's when I read about the Pacific Crest Trail for the first time. Then after the call to adventure, we have a very, very important part of the journey. That's called the resistance to the call. That's when all of your fears and your limitations and the overwhelm happen. Many people stay stuck between the call to adventure and the resistance to the call. For years and years and years, they want to go on an adventure. They resist the adventure back and forth until something big happens or until they meet someone that inspires them or pushes them to act. In Campbell's journey, it's called, quote unquote, meeting the mentor or sometimes supernatural aid or assistance. Then the hero is able to gather their courage and cross the threshold from the known to the unknown. And that's what happened for me that day. I'd spoken with through hikers who had reassured me that if they could do it, there was a chance I could do it too. I was not confident per se. I was full of doubts. I was not ready. But I decided to try my hardest to believe them. I closed my eyes and I crossed that threshold from the known to the unknown. Number two is preparing to hike. Preparing to hike was about one main thing. Forget about training and gear and logistics. That's all secondary. What was most important in that period of time was strengthening my commitment to my vision. I strongly believe in the importance of commitment in achieving our dreams. Your decision to be your most courageous self must be made again and again and must grow bigger and bigger until it's heavy as a double-decker bus. That means building integrity and self-awareness. Integrity is when you show up for yourself like you would with a friend. You made plans to meet a friend and you don't feel like it? You can reschedule once in a blue moon, but what happens if you don't show up? Your friend starts feeling disappointed and disrespected. And the same goes for yourself. You decided to train this morning and you don't feel like it? You have to develop the self-awareness to understand why you don't feel like it. The real reason, not the surface reason. And do not give yourself the option to reschedule. Otherwise, with time, you will stop believing in yourself and stop respecting your own word. If you really cannot bring yourself to do the task, use this time well and sit down with a notebook to dig into yourself and truly understand the root of your resistance. So, I wasn't someone who liked sports. I didn't even like hiking that much. And my cardio was no good. You know me, I'm more of an artist. I had to have enough self-awareness to identify that and to be honest with myself about what needed to be done to bridge the gap. I needed to become the kind of person who does the work to get in good shape, the kind of person who walks to their friends' houses instead of taking the subway, the kind of person who wakes up early and walks to the spinning gym. I had to let go of my identity as a clumsy artist who doesn't like to sweat and become a true hiker before even starting my through hike. It's not even about the physical aspect of it. It's about learning to show up for myself even when I didn't feel like it, so that I would get used to discomfort once I hit the trail and wouldn't be rebuked by the slightest of obstacles. You cannot reach your goals if you're not willing to pay the price. Big goals have big prices, Immense joy comes with immense struggle. You cannot have one without the other. So, number three, Southern California. 
Everyone who through hike will tell you that the first month is pure bliss. Yes, you're in pain, lots of pain. Yes, everything hurts, but you're finally there. The moment you've been waiting for. I remember after about a week feeling so content I could have died. It was the first time in my life where I'd chosen myself and followed my heart so fiercely and bravely. The rewards were immediate and the joy was overwhelming. My memories from that first week are numerous, detailed and exquisite. I was exactly where I was meant to be and in complete awe of the whole experience. I believe that's what happens when your body, soul and heart are in complete alignment. You know what, what else happens when you're in alignment? For me, it was no more headaches and no more stomach burns. For some people, it's no more depression. A lightness of being. You let the facade fall and surrender to your chosen path. That allows you to shine as you truly are and to make friends and become close with those people faster than you could imagine. And I'm not just talking about through hiking here. In my experience, that's what happens whenever you're in alignment. In the past year, I've decided to own my ambition and to pursue my love for deep conversations through coaching. And I've made some wonderful new friends and was told many times how much I shine brighter than I used to. I still struggle with the headaches and the stomach burns sometimes. But my expanded self-awareness allows me to identify what's causing the pain and to address the root of the problem faster. The number four, Northern California. Now, those who know the PCT know that I skipped a section in my story because after South California comes the Sierra Nevada. But there was a lot of snow there in 2019, so my trail family and I decided to hike Northern California first and come back to the Sierras once the snow had melted a little. That's what people call a flip-flop. Now, I kind of hit an emotional wall in Northern California. What happened was that I wanted to keep hiking through the Sierras. I didn't feel too afraid of the snow, having grown up in Canada. I felt like I could do it. But I also wanted to stick with the friends I had made. We called our crew of 12 the Ridge Kids Mountain Club. Ridge Kids Mountain Club. We were super close. They were the kindest and funniest bunch. I was scared that if I went ahead through the mountains, I would miss them too much and have less of a good time on trail. So I went ahead with the group's decision. But things didn't go quite as I had pictured them. Early on in NorCal, the group was split up. Some people had to speed up the pace if they wanted to make it to Canada before their deadline. Others, like me, were not quite ready to hike 25 mile days yet. Our priorities and our mindsets had changed now that the end was in sight. I spent a lot of time in NorCal being angry. I thought I was angry at them for not communicating their intentions clearly enough or for not waiting after me. But truly, I was angry with myself for not listening to my gut in the first place and for taking a decision based on something I couldn't control and most of all, based in fear. The fear of being without them, which at the time masqueraded as the desire to be with them and managed to convince me to follow along. Our ego can be very smart when trying to steer us away from our intuition and in a quote-unquote safer direction. So in Northern California, I learned what it meant to be loyal to myself and how frustrating it felt when I was not. I also learned not to transfer that frustration on others, but instead to take full responsibility for my decisions. To make sure I own my decisions. What do I truly want more than anything? To follow my gut or to surrender to the fear? I don't regret my decisions because I'm grateful for the lessons I've learned and the time I spent with friends in Northern California. I just, you know, wish I'd been more loyal to myself. But that's a lesson I needed to learn for sure. Number five. Next up, the Sierras. Things turned out well in the Sierras because a bunch of the Ridge kids decided to rent cars and meet in Kennedy Meadows to start this section together. We were reunited and thrilled. The landscapes were some of the most magnificent I had ever seen. 
Some days felt like we were on the moon, and others felt like we had died and landed in paradise. One thing's for sure, there was still plenty of snow. A section of trail you thought would be a few hours would take half a day. But damn, it was so beautiful and I felt like a rocket ship. I had so much energy. I don't know if it was the landscapes getting to me or my body finally catching up, but I was hiking faster than ever before and having the time of my life. While we were in the Sierras, we hit the point where we had hiked half of the total miles. It was discouraging and impressive at the same time. Discouraging because we had lots of miles left to cover and a lot less time to hike them. And impressive because we had hiked half the length of the United States with just one little step after the other. And that's when I truly understood the concept of massive action. Massive action is the concept that you will always reach your goal if you keep taking one little focus step after the other. It's easier when we know where the ending is, like with the PCT, but it's a lot harder to keep that faith in quote-unquote real life when the path to success is not as clear as it is on trail. Imagine you plant a seed because you want to grow tomatoes. You will care for the plant until the tomatoes are ripe, right? You will not stop watering the plant after a week because it's not giving you what you wanted yet. You know it will eventually grow tomatoes, so you keep tending to it and giving it some love. We need to have the same kind of belief, focus, and patience in ourselves and our goals while having the flexibility to readjust along the way. Belief that it will work. You don't know when or how, but you believe it will. You have conviction and your conviction carries you through the obstacles. Focus in your actions, because you cannot be trying a different strategy every day if you want one to work. That would be like a fisherman leaving their line in the water for a minute and then making the conclusion that there is no fish and changing location again and again. I don't know much about fishing, but I know it requires patience. Everything that's worthwhile requires patience. And flexibility, because if you've been hanging out with your line in the water for hours and hours and nothing's happening, then maybe there is something wrong about the technique. Maybe you need a different bait. Maybe your line is stuck. I don't know. But once you've given it a real chance to work and it doesn't, you can observe, assess, and course correct until you achieve your goal. And that, my friends, is massive action. Okay. Enough for now. Next week, I'll tell you about the remaining five lessons I've brought home from the Pacific Crest Trail. But let's summarize the first five for now. Number one, what will it take for you to cross the threshold between the known and the unknown? Michael Gerber, in his book The E-Myth, said that your comfort zone has been the tight little cozy planet on which you have lived, knowing All the places to hide because it's so small. So how will you gather the courage to dream big and believe in the possibilities? Number two, how committed are you? Do you show up for yourself like you would for a friend? How honest are you with yourself about the habits that get in the way of reaching your goals? Building integrity and self-awareness is essential to a full and courageous life. Number three, Being in complete alignment brings up the best in us. It makes a lot of our pain disappear and allows us to connect with others on a deeper level. So ask yourself, what in your life is out of alignment? What is no longer serving you? What do you wish to replace it with? Number four, how loyal are you to yourself? Are you crafting your own path or are you following the one others have traced for you? Remember that your ego is trying to keep you safe, but we haven't come on this earth to be safe. We have come here to live with wonder, to explore, to love fiercely, and to make a difference. Number five, remember massive action. You will get there eventually. When I was in college, I used to tell my friends this quote that I heard somewhere. It goes, It will all be fine in the end, and if it's not fine, it just means it's not the end. 
I'll see you next week for some more life lessons from my time on the Pacific Crest Trail. And in the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram at selfgrowthnerds and come talk to me about what you have learned on the way to your dreams. Bye-bye! You just listened to the Self Growth Nerds podcast. I hope you enjoyed. We publish an episode every Monday, so make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified. I want to thank my friend Etienne Galano for editing this, and I want to thank you, kind-hearted souls, for doing the inner work necessary to grow into your true self and make the world a better, more beautiful place. My name is Marie, and I will talk to you next week.